So, as you can see, what I've done. Oh, bear with me before I get too far into it. Just uh, <laughs> make sure there's no dust on the lens there so you can see properly. So, I've just literally just ripped out 600 by 600 piece. It's not even particularly square. It's a cut in the bottom, which, you know, bear in mind, we're going to be up here and we're going to be down here. So, this was my Z0, uh, not Z0, sorry, my um, XNY0 over here. So, this is where I'll be uh, anchoring that from. Um, and to be honest, like I said, it's, it's just screwed down in the four corners. So the antlers, in theory, should miss. Um, yeah, the antlers, in theory, should miss those corners. And obviously, as the chin comes down into the centre over here, yeah, antlers face. So I should be well out of the way. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll set the X and Y um, datum. And then what I'll also do is I'll set the um, set the actual um, X beam down as well. So what I like to do a lot is get a couple of six mil F cuts. I find six mil is just a nice sort of measurement to work to, um, and I'll bring the bed down just so it flies over the top of my surface by six mil. Um, it's a nice, easy, manageable size. And what I find with the um, it whizzing over on cuts like this is I haven't got the wheels of this X-beam bumping up in, in and out of my profile cuts because obviously it's going to be a lot, lot of cuts be a little bit of swarf in there as well so I don't want my uh, wheels running up and down and bumping the um, Z-head about so got that locked off now yeah they're nice and solid so at this stage if I'm ever using packers what I'll do Okay, so I will run the beam then just off of those packers because it does sit down onto the surface nice and tight. So there you go, just off cuts. So what we can do now is come over and set our datum to the corner. Happy with that. So set that to the laser. Now the next thing we'll do now is we'll load the right cutter. Um, in fact, I have got the eight mil, two flute end mil in there already. So we'll run this down to our cutter. I'm gonna set the Z zero. There we go, a little flash of green there tells me everything's happy. So yeah, we're, we're ready to press go now. So I'll just make sure the dust extraction is connected um, and we'll start running the toolpath. Okay, so I'll just check the job for errors. Um, job's not showing any errors. You can see the running light's white now. Well, like, yeah. So yet yeah, you've made that happen. So now when I press um, the go button, um, you'll see now that effectively everything runs in a white light. So we're gonna press go.
So that's the surface all sanded up now. Now this is the first time I've ever ran this file, but I would say just the same as the wolf. Um, some of these should have been ran as pockets really because they're just far too small to be ran as um, as sort of profile cuts. But um, you know, it's nothing that a little sharp knife and you know a little bit of time can't sort. So I'm going to pull this off the bench now and I'll fix it. Um, and go around with the jigsaw and just cut all the different bits and pieces out. Takes a little bit of time, you know, a bit of sandpaper, a little bit of prep, um, you know, and it'd be ready to uh, to spray paint now. Eh? So what do you think so far? It looks pretty cool, eh? I really like these. And like I said, this was, to me, when I was thinking about the idea of getting a CNC, these were one of the projects that I definitely want to get involved in. You know, I think these look so cool and they're so, so simple to do. You know, you just spray any color you want. Um, I was even thinking of doing these spray black and then approaching from the side then with some spray and kind of spraying some, you know, some grays and some silvers just so it kind of catches some of these edges. You know, I think it'll just give a really cool effect against sort of a, a you know, a painted wall. So, um, I'll pull this off the bench now and we'll go from there. There we go, so there we've got sort of our basic sort of cut out. I'm gonna go around now with the um, little flush cut bit in the router table and just trim some of these bits up a bit. As you can see, some of these smaller bits, I'll end up getting them with a craft knife and just sort of trimming those out. You know, so it takes a little bit of time. Um, but again, as soon as I start sanding the back, you'll notice it all starts to sort of come together, really. So yeah, cool little project, eh?
So there you have it folks. Um, there's the wolf I did earlier. Um, that's the first geometric um, design I've ran. Um, and here's the stag. Um, I won't be painting it inside the workshop. I'll take that outside to uh, to paint. But as you can see, you know, with the right tools, it would cut down on cleanup time. I get that. You know, long term, I plan to get some better end mills. But unfortunately, at the moment, I'm just working kind of with what I've got. But as you can see, you know, even on the um, the old spoil board, that wolf kind of just jumps out at you. It looks really cool. So on, you know, most painted surfaces, and obviously you can paint them white, you can paint them red, you can paint them whatever color sort of fitted your scenario. But I'm, I'm really chuffed with that. I'm really happy with that. I think it looks really cool. Uh, very effective. Easy, quick, simple. And I think they make probably some, some great presents for people, you know. So um, if you like the content, let us know. Add a comment. Feel free to um, like and subscribe any of the videos that you, you see fit. Um, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.